Welcome to another installment of Garage Science. In this video, I'll show you how to properly remove and or replace the cutler wheel in your DLP projector. My Acer projector has a native resolution of 1920 by 1080, but claims a maximum resolution capable of 1920 by 1200. Its standard mode of brightness produces 3000 lumens output. This projector has a manual focus and a manual zoom, and the optical zoom is 1.3. It has a lamp that's rated at 210 watts and 4,000 hours of lamp life. The projector should not be operated in an environment over 104 degrees Fahrenheit or 80% humidity. The overall weight is 4.85 pounds. Alright, so to disassemble your projector, you'll need a few tools. You'll need a medium and a small Phillips head screwdriver. And then it's a good idea to have a couple of uh, pricking and prying tools. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove or unscrew the screw in the front cover of the projector and that'll allow us to remove the top cover. It uh, might be a little difficult to pop it out, so you can use one of our pricks to go ahead and pry it just a little bit and pop it. With the cover removed, there's two screws underneath that we'll need to remove. Go ahead and use our medium screwdriver to remove those screws. All right, with those screws removed, we'll flip over the projector, and there's going to be five screws that you're going to need to remove in order to take off the main projector cover. Now with all the screws loosened, it's a good idea to go ahead and uh, get those screws out of the holes. So to do that, we'll go take one of our uh, bricks and we'll rub a magnet on it to temporarily magnetize it. This is a good practice to do uh, if you're ever doing work like this, to go ahead and uh, make your tools uh, magnetize so that way you don't lose any pieces parts. All right, with all five screws removed, we're gonna go ahead and remove the two black screws at the top of the projector. This will allow us to remove the front plate to the projector cover. Now we're ready to start popping the projector casing apart. It is snapped together, so it's gonna take a little bit of effort to go around all the edges and pop it up apart. So go ahead and grab one of your pricks and start popping it. It will take a little bit of effort to pop these pieces off, so you can be a little aggressive with it. Just uh, again, be careful you don't uh, break your projector. That top cover wraps all the way around the back. We'll need to pop that off. Like I said, you may have to be a little bit rough to get the uh, cover to pop apart. And you'll see here in a minute, I'm just a little, little rougher than I should be and I actually pop one of the uh, securing points for the cover. Part, I actually break it, but it still secures uh, just fine when I reassemble it. And with that, you can take the top cover of the projector off, revealing the internals to the projector, mainly the lamp, and then the color wheel that is directly in front of the lamp. All right, so it's a good idea to have clean hands and keep a clean environment when you start working with the inside of the projector. I wash my hands. You really should be using gloves, and I wish I, had, I would have been using gloves when I did this. Uh, I'll talk about that a little bit more later. I did end up getting some dust on the mirror that uh, runs into the, the lenses for the projector. So I'll talk about that a little bit more. Uh, but you will need to remove the one screw that secures the lamp, 
and then you can remove the lamp and unplug it. Again, the lamp for this projector is rated at 4,000 hours and 3,000 lumens of output. All right, so to get to your color wheel, there's a bracket that has screws on the left side uh, that you would have to remove all the circuitry to get to those screws. So we're gonna try and get around that. There's a, a plastic cover on the side of the color wheel that I think we can remove to get to the color wheel. And so we'll try that. First, we'll remove the metal plate. And then you can see the color wheel spins and there's a small plastic cover on the right of it and there's three screws that hold that cover on so we're gonna remove those and try and free up a little bit of space to remove the color wheel all right then there is one screw on the top that you'll unscrew to remove the color wheel itself. And once you have this removed, the color wheel and the color wheel cover will both be floating and you'll be able to wiggle them out of place uh, to remove them. You will want to be a little gentle and try as hard as you can not to touch the color wheel itself so you don't get any fingerprints on it. Another good reason to be wearing gloves when you're doing this sort of work. Now you will see there's a small opening that goes into uh, the DMD chip and the optical lenses for the projector and that mirror is very important to uh, be kept clean and so I would suggest put a small piece of scotch tape over that opening to make sure that no dust gets into that while you work on the projector. I did not do this and I'll talk about that a little bit more and you can see the results of not taking that precautionary measure and how that affects your image at the end of the day. Alright, so this is the color wheel. There's three screws that hold the brushless motor on the back. And we're not going to worry about removing those. To reassemble the projector, you go ahead and put it back together the same way we took it apart. I did initially assemble this projector without the color wheel in place. And that was with the thought that the projector doesn't know one way or the other whether or not the color wheel is actually in there. Uh, it turns out that's false and the projector is able to sense whether or not the color wheel is actually spinning as it's supposed to. And so when the color wheel is removed, the projector will not function properly. It'll give an error, thinking that there's something wrong with the color wheel. And in a moment here, we'll go ahead and go into how to properly mount the color wheel inside the projector. So the color wheel cover, this plastic cover actually has a sensor on it that measures the RPMs of the brushless motor that the color wheel runs on. And the projector computer uses that to determine whether or not the color wheel is functioning properly. And so you do need the color wheel in place for the projector to function properly. So here you can see the projector turns on with the color wheel removed but still plugged in and you'll see uh, there's the black button on the top of the projector that I'm having to press in order for the unit to be able to turn on. It is a safety mechanism that requires the small cover on the top of the projector to be in place in order to actually power on the unit. So basically we're going to find an empty spot within the projector casing to fit this color wheel so that way it's not in line of the output light from the lamp, but is still mounted within the projector so that way um, the projector will think that the color wheel is functioning properly.
took a little bit of fiddling around to find the right location to uh, put this. Uh, eventually uh, found a spot directly next to the lamp. It seemed to work pretty well. Another option here is uh, if you break the glass on the projector wheel and just snap it off, uh, that performs the same uh, basic task if you're trying to remove the effectiveness of the color wheel on your projector for your DLP printer uh, and you're not intending to ever use the color wheel as it was intended to be used uh, ever again, you can go ahead and just break the glass on the color wheel and leave the color wheel mounted as it would normally be within the projector. But again, you will not be able to produce a color image uh, on the projector without replacing the color wheel, which generally runs between $80 to $90. I did initially try and secure the color wheel with super glue, and that unfortunately did not work uh, very well. It actually dissolved some of the plastic on the bottom of the color wheel cover, and so went with an epoxy option to secure that color wheel instead. It is going to be very important while you epoxy this color wheel in place that you do not block the small rib that has to come down directly next to the projector lens so that way you can put the top cover back on to the projector when you reassemble it. And now with the projector reassembled with the projector color wheel not in its proper location you can see it produces a grayscale image. Uh, you do see the lines flying across the screen that is because the projector is still trying to produce a color image and is unable to and so the DMD chip is uh, functioning as it normally would. So if I had the color wheel in place, you would see blue, red, and uh, yellow and uh, green lines flowing across the screen from the color wheel, but now obviously those lines are replaced by grayscale lines. So I have just a little over 200 hours on this projector so far, so still have plenty of lamp life left. But you can see there is a uh, image that is exactly the same as what it would normally be, just uh, in grayscale. Now, the mirror that I spoke of earlier that you need to cover with uh, scotch tape uh, can be seen here with some of the, the dust particles that were allowed to settle on it while I had the projector apart. And I can tell that they're on that mirror and not on the DMD chip because when you focus on the projector image, uh, the particles of dust go out of focus. And then once you uh, focus on the particles, the projector image goes out of focus. So I do know that the dust is on the mirror and I'll have to disassemble the projector once more and do a thorough cleaning of all the optical mirrors uh, within the projector. So that'll be a project for another day. Other than that, uh, this project was a success in, a, in removing the color wheel. I hope you got a lot out of it. Uh, like this video if you enjoyed watching it and if you haven't checked out my channel go ahead and go there and make sure you subscribe. And go ahead and leave me a comment on the video and let me know what you thought of it. And if you have any questions, uh, leave it there and I'll do my best to answer it. Thanks for watching.